<laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to a gigantic, enormous episode of Monster Party. Monster Party! <laughs> 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 Oh, you are in for a treat, because a this treat. episode is about clearly one of our favorite subjects. Yes. Godzilla. Yes! Godzilla! Yeah! Gojira. Oh, Gojira, yeah. I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And we have a very special guest here. Uh, very, this, very special This episode, guest. very special. Uh, what can I say about this man? I mean, he is a filmmaker he's a director a writer an artist amazing. a godzilla expert not to be believed an amazing catch that we got here ladies and gentlemen john fasano john yeah Woo! thank you thank you it's good to be here this evening with my friends <laughs> thank you for joining us john Much he's also a master of disguise <laughs> <laughs> i was I just I'm here because Godzilla was my only friend growing up, and oh. I want to pay tribute to him tonight. <laughs> well, right. you know, it's you are, like, you're in good company, yeah, my yeah, friend. Because, yeah, yeah, because in, in a way, that was the same way for me. You know, yeah. I, I mean, Godzilla was my friend, and I when I saw Godzilla's Revenge, I mean, I wanted to be that little boy on that island hanging out with little uh, Minya. Yeah. I did, me. I did. And well, I hey, I, what are you doing? Come on over here. Says you have to fight bullies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm afraid because they're well, so big. I don't know. I'm a little scared of monsters. And, uh, see, we can all do the voice. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was a mix between Don Knotts and one of the guys from Deadliest Catch. <laughs> <laughs> but he was really, it was really charming, and and I love that film. Uh, even though people like criticize. That a lot. It's a strange but movie. It is. It it's is. Like in a, a good lot, way. It's like one of those bottle episodes of an old sitcom where they they use all <laughs> yeah, the old totally. footage and they shot this one suit they made in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> right. Totally. But, exactly. But it has a connection to you know. Remember the Gamera movies had been out for a while and they always had right. a kid. In fact, the two kids went into Gamera's gullet in a little submarine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who hasn't been in Gamera's right. gullet? Brian right. Singer. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, give him time. Give him time. But. Uh, Godzilla's Revenge was like, it was us. It was the kid with the Godzilla toys yeah. mm-hmm. who could, calling Monster Island, calling, and he could go to sleep and imagine he was there, and like, you just wanted to be that kid. I wanted yeah. that radio set. Yeah, Did he, you really? Yeah, I want that radio and set. you really thought there was a Monster Island. No, you know? I, I mean, there is a Ogasawara Monster Island. Island, right? Sean, Ogasawara I, Island. I spent it so exists. much time drawing pictures of that island. Totally. And you know what else? And I'd always draw a plane that said Pan Am on it. <laughs> because, yeah, and you always imagine the other monsters you didn't product see placement. on the island. You know, like you, you imagine all the Toho monsters on there. Even though you yeah. saw some of them when the Destroyer monsters. Yeah. And, and, you know, but yeah, you, you wanted to go back to Destroyer, uh, to the that island all the and time. And Rodan's out there like getting dolphins out of yeah, the yeah. <laughs> the, Japanese, the Japanese want to kill dolphins whether they're whale <laughs> yeah. they're hurricane for tuna it's like let's oh, kill dolphins whenever man. we can. That's the so. secret behind dolphin slaughter. That's the story <laughs> yeah, they're right. not telling so, you. So the film The Cove it's not really that's not how it is. It's oh, no, really it's Rodan. 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 I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. But, but now wouldn't you wouldn't you agree though that even though that yeah that's it's kind of a clip movie obviously. Sure. Uh, but that uh, Gabara or Gabara? How do Gabara. you say it? Gabara. It's Gabara. It's Gabara, right? It's Gabara. Gab- yeah, weird. That, that, is like, that is a great monster. I it love is. that monster. And he doesn't, yeah, he a doesn't scary, have a tail. A scary Crazy. bully monster. And he ha- the, his roar, it's kind of like a laugh. <laughs> yeah, I can't even do, can you do that yeah. voice? Yeah, he, he just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, 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 it's intimidating. <laughs> you can be the Fred Travelina of Godzilla <laughs> characters. Fred Travelina. <laughs> of Godzilla. Didn't, didn't, didn't Gabara have hair too? Yeah. Yeah. And no tail, right? No, he didn't have a tail, and he and he had a little like orange hair, kind of like you know that that big ugly Weird. redhead, kind of like red head, red, red buttons. Know. A yeah. mutated no, red button. No, so red buttons he had, isn't like, fierce. All over yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I love how of all the Godzilla films we started with Godzilla. <laughs> of course, head. you have to. But also, Gabra was was so, was so cool about him is that is that he um, he looks like he's from Ultraman. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't look like any of the other Godzilla monsters who kind of try to look like an actual creature. Right. Like sure. go, like a dinosaur, like a Gorosaurus dinosaur or something. Or yeah. But but then after that we get guys with saws for hands, yeah. yes. drills yeah. for dicks. You know. It's like, <laughs> right. I miss that one. I don't like to brag. But, you know. <laughs> 
No, but you're right. And and uh, but Gabra is a really cool and that monster. film is very strange too. Even the real world that that kid lives in, the industrial like yeah. clap, it is busy, crowded Japan. It's just a it's a strange movie. Yeah, like, well, I think what city was that? It, well, the funny yeah. thing is in that for in the first couple scenes, I mean, when he's walking with the little girl, you actually see industrial smokestacks with smoke yeah. coming out. Yeah, and I remember like, seeing Island was the escape. Well, I remember seeing it as a kid, thinking, "God, man, the air that they're breathing." As a kid, I thought that, <laughs> right, and then right. of course, then I saw Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, right, and then right. it all made sense to me. Right, right. And, it, and now they've got it all cleaned up. Their <laughs> whole yes. pollution right, problem right, right. is taken I, care of now. I mean, it's actually you know, you never see the people's lives in any of the other Godzilla movies, really. They always have their apartment and then the science office. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, or, United, or the United Nations. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. This was yeah. the first time you ever saw anyone in the movie, or, you know, or the you know the noodle shop that right. he was going to step on. Right. But you never saw them at home at night getting ready for sleep and and just that kid's life that his father was always on the train. Yeah. And, and he'd come home to be a note like. There's noodles in the fridge. Yeah. Go to sleep. The mom had to, no, 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 no. The yeah. mom, no, no. The mom had to. She had to work at like a, a restaurant, and then there was the toy maker guy who he lived was like next the uncle door. Or something, yeah, or he's a toy, he, was, he was also Doctor Who in um, King Kong Escapes. Oh, that's that right. Yeah. Evil Doctor yeah. Who. Yeah. Right. But in Godzilla's Revenge, right, he's the kindly, he was the kindly, kindly neighborhood pedophile. Right. No, he right. was yeah, not yeah, a pedophile. Yeah, Dan Roebuck. I he, have toys in my house. He <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know what? No, he was we, a good kind of pedophile because hey, he never acted on it. Hey, he we, just, we love all in the first mind of all, theater. I just want to say we love Daniel Roebuck. He is a, a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful person. With I'm not amazing, familiar. Yes, I, I have no idea who you're talking about. Person, you're talking about. And and uh, I just saying that the toy maker was a very lovely person, and he. he but but it was a kind of sad, kind of lonely existence that for the had. kid. For, no, no, the kid, for the yeah. kid, and you can understand. I mean, his right. whole world. I mean, when he he would play with that little uh, radio, which didn't work. He's all you know. Right. Come in, Monster Island. Come on, Monster. Island. That was his world. You right, know? right, totally. And now he's like, wanted by the mob after the movie. <laughs> so <laughs> that's right. Because yeah, two bank that's right, robbers. Right. That's only right. Pan's Labyrinth is more depressing <laughs> because at the yeah. end she's dead. Right, right. <laughs> this kid lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now well, in, in know, witness protection. Well, look, that, I'm just saying that's a movie that I really enjoyed and I really loved, and then which led to Smog Monster, which is another. And talk f- about one of the most surreal and now, bizarre exactly. Godzilla films Surreal-y ever. Yeah. Now that one, that is really amazing. Just a combination of cartoonish, kind of like childlike. Scenes and then like nightmarish, dark. Yeah. St- I mean, just a strange, strange movie. And I believe it's the first. It's the only one I think that has like actual cartoon animation in it. That's you know, right. when it shows yeah. it shows yeah. Hedorah. Yeah. And to me, it's like Very it's bizarre. a barely kid's, car- it's, barely it's, it's a kid's interpretation of what the smog monster is doing. Right. You know, when they're drawing right. with crayon. It's an ABC after school special Godzilla. It's it's like it about is. Yes, yeah. exactly. And but then again, you have the hallucination stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, where where what the yeah, the sixties and Go Go Girls. But and the guys in the bar. The guys in the bar. Sean, yeah, and then yeah. he has, yeah, and he has very looks, strange. And yeah. Godzilla, very much Godzilla, the hero in that film. You know, oh, yeah. he yes. really, they really cemented him as the savior of the world. You know, from that it's, from that point on, it's 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 interesting though that it's the only movie that has cartoon animation. And then a creature that flies over and reduces everyone's skeletons with acid. It's a lighthearted romp. It's a lighthearted <laughs> yeah. romp where everyone gets reduced to yeah. skeletal parts. But well, that's what we, made we, it so yeah. scary. Though, you well, know? well, you know, in Japanese culture, you you know, they, they've I've developed a pretty thick skin, I guess, when it comes to like the kind of things that a kid can take in yeah. his afternoon entertainment. Yeah, but but that the other great thing about that film and I have mentioned this before, but it, it's it was the first film that I saw where you actually saw Godzilla toys. It's where the little boys playing mm-hmm. with his Godzilla toys on the slide and that, they they uh, acknowledge Godzilla as a those, as a, what were those? The Popies? What were those? No, no, they're Bullmark. 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 Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and he the, also had Ultraman toys too. He did. Yeah. He did right. have Ultraman toys. But that is a that So that means a, Ultraman's real too, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, watched, I watched that movie and I said there's toys. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, what we all yeah, did. Right. Yeah. We all did yeah. that. Yeah. I was like, where do I get my, that stuff? I had yeah. broken my Aurora <laughs> of course, yeah. off the base, and I was to just play using with him that's as right. an action yeah. figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We remember, still have him. Remember when they finally started, like at first when they first came out, they were all molded in pink, and like, and finally they molded yeah. them in kind of a Godzilla color. It was a greenish yeah. color. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. so happy. And yeah, yeah, that was my action figure. Yeah. Now, wasn't the director of Smog Monster uh, the executive producer of the new Godzilla film? Uh, Bono. Bono. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which is interesting because I think that was when he did Smog Monster. That was the only one that he did. Yeah, they so weren't so he, happy with no, him. They, right. No, they they were pissed was off at him. He, he was never he was never uh, allowed to be involved with Godzilla till the new one. But the funny which thing which is, might that's explain certain things. Oh, <laughs> oh, and wait a let's minute. start. Wait a okay. minute. Are, let us begin. We're talking about <laughs> the new. Godzilla film. Legendary release. It's a Warner Brothers release. Get that box closer to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just <laughs> wanted to say No, I actually have, a, we have a, a Godzilla toy from the new movie here with us where wow, you can actually moves. push something on the back. The of- the oh! <laughs> okay. now, now, we should mention, if you haven't seen the movie yet, do not continue listening because there's going to be spoilers. This is for people who have already seen the movie. We're going to talk about this thing. I, saw I think you should I listen saw, anyway. I no. the box yeah, office. Well, yeah. Everyone that's seen the movie has seen it by now. That's I agree right. with James. No if, you haven't, if you haven't seen it, I think it's time to switch to a, a different uh, podcast. Now, I, um, okay. Uh, now you're talking madness. <laughs> <laughs> Never okay. switch to another podcast podcast. Okay, so, okay, okay listen, let's listen just start. The, listen okay. through this podcast and then decide whether you still want to go see it. There okay. you go. So Never. let's just start. The new Godzilla film. Okay? John, well, you saw it. You saw it like, what, three times or so? Or I saw it once. You saw it once. And, and Which was pretty amazing because I usually see every movie more than once. But okay. that once was enough. That was yeah. the old Really? Yeah. yeah, me too. So, well, is it, well, explain. So, you were not a fan? You, I mean, you went in, you didn't like it? Tell me. No, I... Okay, this is... It's... Yeah. it's it's very difficult to talk about the film because Godzilla is our beloved character. Mm-hmm. And in 1998, you know, was it 98? Yeah, Tristar. Yeah. You know, where, where the Matthew Broderick, the, Dreadful. the family murderer. Where, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. Where yeah. They, where they, True. You know, yeah. Where they, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they teased us and you know, they yeah. wouldn't show Godzilla, but they released Godzilla. And, they, you know, and then you, when you saw it, it was the same feeling, which was you spent all this money and this is the best you could do. An yeah. iguana. Yeah. An iguana, yeah. right? The, the most aesthetically un, un, unappealing With the uh, face of face. Shere Khan from yeah. the Jungle <laughs> yeah. Book. That's yeah. The chin. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The no, chin. That was the inspiration. I thought no. Oh. I thought it was Nick Nolte. No. It had a very... <laughs> there was a Nolte-esque quality to that Godzilla, I felt. The, 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 no, I talked to Topolis and, I, and he said, did you see my new Godzilla? And I said, the face reminds me of Shere Khan from... He goes, that's what I used. I was like... Oh God! Are you serious? Seriously, the I mean, head of Shere Khan on a on a dancer's body in a lizard suit. You know, it's so weird. Uh, what, John, what could possibly go no, wrong? John, yeah. I was so I wanted that Godzilla uh, when I heard that Hollywood was making a big budget Godzilla movie. I was so excited. I was yeah. so. I think all I, of us. I, I think yeah. I was. I was hoping for this great film and. After the movie, I remember Sean and I, we had this discussion about it. I don't know if it was – I was so thrilled that they spent a lot of money on a big Godzilla film and Godzilla was back. I was so happy about it. But still at the same time, the film itself was not a great film. But I was still – you know, <laughs> I was like – No, it's, it's the Superman return syndrome. My nephew loves Superman as a character, loves the Donner movies. He went to see that movie. He goes, it's the greatest movie I ever saw. I said, see it again. He was like, oh, it's not very good. Mm. But it was just the excitement of seeing a big screen Superman again after so many years. The, the 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 problem with the new Godzilla is that the script isn't very good. You know, people are yep. talking about Godzilla doesn't come in till later and things like that. Which I did because Godzilla was a presence through the whole movie. He's in the title sequence. Mm-hmm. They talk about him. You see his fins. You see him in the ocean. And I thought that buildup was was actually worked for me. Mm-hmm. And and when, for a while, for a while. But and then the Mudos came out, and you had monster action, and you knew Godzilla was coming, but. The problem is, like the Roland Emmerich movie, the script is so bad that you watch the movie and the actors couldn't even bring themselves to deliver those lines like they believe them. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Davis Traherne was like, there is a new monster. His name is Muto. Here's is him on the board. Here. Like, you, they, they just said the lines because they didn't mean anything. And, and, there's, and the thing about Godzilla is that he means something. He means, you know, whether he's the spirit of nuclear waste or whether he's a, the spirit of nature of the earth. There's a spiritual nature of Godzilla, which is completely missing from this movie. They talk about it. You know, Dr. Sarazawa says, well, you know, when nature is out of balance, here comes Godzilla. Was well, he emodium? You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> the, the world needs an enema. Here comes Godzilla, you know. But, but the thing is that... that that the people in the movie, they, they just say that, and that's not earned. In other words, Sarasawa doesn't say, you know, in 1942, a monster attacked and something killed it. And in 1956, I'm like, there's no backstory. All the backstories about the crap that 
we don't care about. Yeah, there, oh, and and it just across the board, there is absolutely zero character development. There's a little bit with Brian Cranston and a beginning of it with his son, but then for the rest of the movie, Kick Ass is walking around, wide eyed, going just looking at things, and like, and maybe they gave him lines, and like, oh God, don't take, let's take the lines away. For he's, not a, sake. he's not a very charismatic actor, and no, I really didn't no. care he's about char- his wife and his kid. And no, like, yeah, none of that. Well, kick-ass, okay. So the idea, it's it, it's not. I think yeah, it's writing. I I, it's I, I agree with you. It, 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 no, I, I have been in these meet. I've been in these meetings. I've you know written some big big movies that you know made over a hundred million dollars and cost over a hundred million dollars, and I see a guy in a room saying, "When Godzilla attacks Hawaii." There should be a tsunami because everybody knows when the water goes out, a tsunami's coming. And I would say, if I was in the room, well, then how come when he attacks San Francisco, there's not a tsunami? Hmm. Because they, they, everyone wants their little scene in there, but no one's, no, no one was, no one was saying, well, if there's this, then there's this, and if Godzilla's the force of this, then he would have been in that scene earlier. We would have seen him, not just, you know. In other words, there's no logic. There's no logic taken in the script. But why not? My thing is always like, why not? Why can't they take, and you could probably answer this, which is, why not take one more pass and go, okay, there's a tsunami every time. Uh, Somebody actually comments on the fact that the Muto is biting into all these (coughs) nuclear rockets, and now there's a giant radiation problem everywhere. Yeah, wouldn't every character in that movie die from radiation? Yeah, everybody's dead after that movie. That's like Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, where... (laughs) And and, and here's, here's like, for me, because as a writer of movies... I'll write something. I, I'm scrupulous about, okay, let's see. This helicopter has to get from San Francisco to L.A. in X number of hours. What helicopter can make that flight in that hour? And I'm looking it up and whatever. And there's always someone that says, there's no helicopter that fast. And I have to say, well, the Bell, UE, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> so everyone says, oh, these monsters exuded an electromagnetic pulse. Well, and he says, don't worry. In 10 minutes, the lights will come back on again. Well, actually, if they exude an electromagnetic pulse... All of the circuitry is fried, and it will take months for it all to be replaced. So, you know, they, they use the word electromagnetic pulse the way they did in uh, Pacific Rim, where he says, don't worry, Gypsy Danger is analog. Yeah, it's computer is, but all the wires inside of it would have been fried by the electromagnetic pulse. So instead of just having someone say, it's some weird sort of radiation like an electromagnetic yes. pulse, they oh. say it's an EMP, and then they have it act the way... And well, the MP wouldn't. No, 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 but, no, 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 no. Wait, but then, no, no, hold on. But then, once you even have that, then, okay, we've got this electromagnetic pulse that happens every time the Muto's around, and then they keep sending planes after it. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. like why Why instead, what would have been so much better is maybe send some prop planes or something in there and go old school against it. But, oh, right. but like, neat. to yeah. constantly have these, like, doing the same, like, I almost wanted to do a drinking game of, like, drink every time you wouldn't do that. <laughs> like, you wouldn't have that plan. It's like, it's like, it's like let's, let's do a halo jump into a city which has been abandoned. Which we could have walked into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's tra- go up in a plane. Oh, the train. Well, yeah. The train. Yeah, why, yeah. why did they transport let's, that let's thing put a nuke on the train? On the train when on, there's on the most nukes ri- all over the country. <laughs> right. We could have just brought one in from San Francisco. And on the, yeah. the most, on the most rickety fly. bridge. They do fly, the missiles. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's interesting because uh, I didn't like the movie Monsters, right? <laughs> I didn't like the I movie agree. Monsters, which has only two monster scenes in it, so like that, Godzilla. This was the director's. This was the director's. Same director. Gareth, 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 Gareth. Takes forever. forever. There's only two monster scenes, one a night where you don't see anything, and then one where you finally see them. And what are they doing? The monsters are making out. Well, what's the story in this? The Mudos just want to <laughs> screw. Yeah. So he's, he's got $200 yeah. million dollars yeah. to make the same movie he made, but add Godzilla. But, yeah. but as far as like you know, Godzilla not showing up right away, I mean, I... I'm I'm all for build up and you know teasing and like but I I do but think enough that is enough for, for a point. Godzilla film like you said I, I, was it was it Hawaii that first fight with the Muto and Godzilla the one that like, was on TV and, yeah. and yes that was a great little gag with a kid watching the TV but you wanted to see at least a little bit of that fight even the classic I, I Godzilla yeah, film I don't believe the thing that it's like well if we showed too much that would have been boring by the end it's like. No, no, no. no. You, you build up, even though all the classic Godzilla films, you have a little short fight with Ghidra, and then you have the big fight at the end. I mean, you you have about three. I mean, and, and then at the, then the other later, in the, when the doors closed, from the point of view of the character, and you just saw Godzilla, he's just about to do something awesome and freaking cool. Door closed. Everybody in the theater went. Oh! I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like what what uh, Guillermo del Toro did know 
correctly with Pacific Rim, at least, is that show a lot of monster action. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that they got right in that in Pacific Rim. Like, no, obviously you can't have two hours of Godzilla fighting constantly. Yes, you can. Well, I you could, <laughs> but like, but there was just no. He was like, <laughs> he was yeah, like, a, he yeah. was like a, he was like a secondary character in kaiju porn. porn. Don't sit in front of me in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Masturbation. What the hell? Like, it was like it smells like comedy. Yeah, but... <laughs> it was like Godzilla was a, was a supporting character in his own movie to me. Well, they, everyone know. says that, and it's like. Uh, if, if that's the criticism that I've heard, that's that specific, specific criticism that Godzilla is a supporting character in his own movie, and he's he's more like the theme of the movie. And when he does come out, it's great. But the, that final fight's too short, and it's yes. all in the rain. It's again. all in dark it's in and dark yeah. in the rain. And you know what? What I wanted to see, see when when uh, Jan de Bont was going to direct the Godzilla movie that eventually became the Roland Emmerich movie, Stan Winston made a new Godzilla for him, which I put on the cover of G Fan. And uh, and he also had a, and a character called the Griffin, which was a giant flying monster, because even Jan de Bont knew, unlike Roland Emmerich, Godzilla has to fight another monster. Yes, that's what we grew up on. Except for, I mean, there's one Godzilla movie, and then Godzilla raids again. He's fighting Anguirus. like Godzilla yeah, from is that fighting point another on. monster yep. <clears throat> constantly. So that when they took the other monster out of the last movie, and it just became. Beast in 20,000 Fathoms with baby Godzilla's in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Literally, and everyone getting sick in the street, whatever. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't pay off on what we wanted. And when I heard there were other monsters in this movie and they teased some dead centipede in the streets and things like that, giant centipede, I was all, I, I was all ready for that. I was ready for that. But when they go into that skeleton in the beginning, if Dr. Sarazawa said that that was a Godzilla and the Mudo got in it and killed it, because mm-hmm. these guys are enemies for thousands of years, right. for millennia. Mm-hmm. That kind of explanation I need more than, you know, nuclear bomb analog. There's a battery. Right. Pseudo here. science claptrap. The pseudo science Although... is that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. That the, the science and the and the military jargon in this movie is all actually incorrect. And so, and there's more of it. Then, then you know, like a, a wonderful, you know, if Cranston had been alive, and said with Sarazawa, and Cesar had d- delivered those lines to him about let him fight. In other words, that there's that Cranston's like hates Godzilla because he killed everyone, and he's like, you don't understand. Godzilla came and saved us. Then that's what he does. And there'd be some personal, uh, you know, well, that's, well, that's why you needed to have killed Cranston yes. off so early, yeah. like a Janet Lee. You know, they should have kept him around. He's a more, much more interesting character and actor than than the son. Than right. kick ass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I actually, you know, the, the stuff that Sarah Zawa says about survival of the fittest and the whole Darwinian angle, I actually sort of like that. Because for all the movies I've ever seen Godzilla fight other species, other creatures, monsters, I, I never got that sort of a backstory before. Like, you know, they're, they're fighting it out for supremacy. That actually sort of worked for me. But that's what that's what works in the movie for me as a whole. Like, uh, as st- the stuff that I did enjoy about it was like the mood, the kind of the sort tone. of... tone. Yeah, yeah. Thematic kind of tone about, you know, the sort of uh, mythology of Godzilla. That part of it I like, but it, it was just handled so bad. Well, let me, let me yeah. just ask you, because you mentioned something that that you liked. I mean, you're kind of like ragging on it right now, but it, but it's like there were some things that you did like, and there's been a lot of talk about, number one, the, the destruction and the look of Godzilla. So I'm just going to ask you guys, the the destruction, like the tsunami, the the destruction of Vegas, and all that other stuff, how did you guys feel about that? Did you guys like it's that? It blowed up real good. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was well done. <laughs> if it was all, hey, look. no, see, I thought the tsunami stuff was terrific. I thought if there was anything where they they like took a page out of history, you know, when when Japan had that uh, big earthquake and they had the tsunami, and you saw you see footage all over the internet, and they just kind of recreated that, and I thought that was amazing. That stuff. I like, hey, I I I loved all the visual things. Again, I agree that at the end, I want to see the monsters. I want to. I, I don't need rain, darkness every time. You can have it take place in sunlight and still make it be effective we have the technology at least, at least one of the fights okay, yes. yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. but Break what about godzilla what about godzilla the, godzilla, no, no, I'm t- the actual what they did and what, how they made godzilla look matt i mean what did you think of him i personally is it my favorite godzilla design no but did i enjoy it i, I like it because th- one of the things that i think that makes that particular godzilla design work so well is 
by how huge they make him. See, I love that. Let's people go. people like criticized. They said, oh, Godzilla's too fat. Oh, he's too big. I loved his size. I loved how huge. It was a little, huge, it was no, different. No, 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 it was a little I, different I loved without how going large too far. He was. And also, it seemed like he would get tired, too. I mean, I, I mean, I really liked that that size of him. And also, the thing about the atomic breath, you know, in, in Godzilla films, whether it's like uh, Destroy All Monsters or, you know, or even Godzilla vs. Smog Monster, where he kind of throws that breath out on a regular basis. But here in this film, it's special. It's not. It's like he has to build up to it. You know. Yeah, well, why there, did he? Why did he wait? I love that, James. I love that. There's that shot. They have this shot of where he's when he's starting to getting ready to blow that atomic that breath, and he goes. <gasps> he just takes in that big breath, and there's this great shot of his his chest opening up, you know, getting yeah. really big, and then his mouth opening up. I mean, I love. But that. it is radiation, right? Which is what the thing lives on. You see, right? you guys are just too <laughs> smart. You guys are. You guys are just too. Sh- no, but I was confused a bit about the whole. The mutos were. They literally ate radiation. Like, what was the? They ate what? radi. That's again more, more of the science that blew. Is that they ate radiation and we kept trying to kill them with nukes? That was <laughs> yeah. Smart. See, John. Yeah. John really knows his science. Well, no. no the for idea, someone like me, I don't know my yeah, science. That's really well, a scientist like, to know that. But it's, at least it with, within the movie, their idea was again another horrible plan, which is let's lure them with radiation and then kill them with radiation. Well, that was. <laughs> but, that was <laughs> but they eat radiation. <laughs> the, the, the thing is that nobody, you know, n- nobody says. I think Sarazawa says once, and then they just sort of brush him off which would have been nice to have Cranston there with him as a, a white guy they would listen to <laughs> uh, from the military, is that when Sarah Sawa says, you know, they feed on radiation, we're just, you know, what, you know, the, 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 I, all of the machination of getting into the city and getting the nuke back, like we only have one nuke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, have, right, exactly. We have a million, and all those guys, and, the, and they've bitten the, the casing. Right, right. So... Radiation's leaking out. Our guys are just there in their BDUs. You know, they're just totally. all those guys are dead of cancer. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You know. Hey, how about dynamite? <laughs> There's G- this thing G- called G- gunpowder. <laughs> Well, not only that, but they have the nuke. The best they can do is say, let's put it on a tourist boat and get it as far out to sea as we can. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that I mean, whole thing. And then, you know, he's on, it for, he's on it for 10 minutes, and then a helicopter comes down, doesn't take the nuke, takes him. Okay, let the nuke radiate the, the entirety <laughs> right, right. of San Francisco. Yeah, it's the Dark Knight Rises all over again. Just don't eat, <laughs> yeah. just don't eat sushi in San Francisco for the, next, <laughs> right. for the next 17 and a half years. Or breathe. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, don't don't go on that Alcatraz tour. But it really. <laughs> but it's again, it's 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 the it's the using science and military for plot points and not making them realistic at all. And I mean, not understanding not the understanding military, how they would no, work, and not and also you know playing fast and loose with what radiation does to you and what the EMP does because they made up the rules. Mm-hmm. As opposed to giving us some other, if there was some yeah, specific, like make up the said, science. Yeah, like if you said they only react to gamma radiation. We have a make a bomb. All of our bombs are hydrogen bombs, but we have to. We've made a bomb that's gamma radiation. They'll follow that one. They, there's no thought involved. It's just like you know what? We'll just we'll just say it's radiation. We'll just say it's an EMP. And you know what was the first thing that the, the EMP was in the Matrix? You know, and it's just the fact that. The people who wrote this movie, and and even Frank Darabont did a pass on this film. I think, wow. you know, who knows what he uh, he may wow. have written. Like one the one line may remain by the end, but all the people at this movie, I'm telling you, every team that hit this film made four hundred thousand dollars, and there's at least five teams in there. So they spent you know two million dollars or more on a script, and it's not. Flawless. It should be flawless. The visual right. effects are flawless, right. right? Godzilla looks amazing. You ask about what Godzilla. Godzilla yeah. looks amazing except for his tippy toe feet, which well, kind of look wait, like elephant wait, feet. Wait, what do, you, what do you mean the tippy toe feet? Well, Tell me like about it. Because he, he doesn't have, they didn't want to do the backward jointed leg. They didn't do the big flat Godzilla with the big three or four toes. Right. So they gave him elephant feet. <laughs> right? He, I don't do think like I like, noticed the elephant feet. If you, like if you watch when he steps in by the, by the airport, He's got elephant feet. I don't want to take this out of the box. You can see on the side of the box. Well, yeah, we, we, the oh, there we go. So there, got, we actually are looking at the box like, right He's now. got feet like an elephant. Right. And, I never noticed and that. We have now proven his point. And they're <laughs> tiny. They're tiny for the size of the rest. And I have no problem with the rest of his body because some of these Godzillas, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, I could be Godzilla. 
I'm built like that. Just, <laughs> just put me in a rubber suit. <laughs> right, right. Just put me in a thin rubber suit, and I already look like Godzilla. Yeah. I but, never, ever cut my toenails. So <laughs> <laughs> You didn't realize that they curved back up and through the bottom of the feet. <laughs> but Godzilla looks great, even with the bad feet. Godzilla yes, looks yes. great. He fights great. They gave him a long, long whippy tail, which Godzilla, right. with a little point at the end, which Godzilla never had before, but he uses it effectively. So... That's all wonderful, and I love you know when he fights these guys. The fights are good, and I think my friend T T T J Storm actually like motion captured Godzilla for some of those fights. Oh. He's a martial arts guy. He's, he posted some pictures of himself with a tail on in the, in the green screen suit, you know. So all that stuff is, and he's a real martial arts guy. So all that stuff is wonderful, but to get to it, you have to sit through scenes where you go, what? What the fuck? There's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of brain downtime. It's not about that there's the time until you see Godzilla. It's about the time is not being, you know, there are a lot of Godzilla movies that were made in Japan that if you, and they were probably translated badly, where the family stuff in it is kind of awful. The later, the yeah. later ones. Yeah. But I, I just watched Monster Zero and Ghidra again the other just day. Just thinking of that And movie. I was thinking, like, you could, the next movie could be Ghidra. And I would use that script. I'd have the Martian girl. I mean, I would yeah, use yeah, that script. Yeah, yeah, It's a great science fiction the story. The next movie should be, should be Ghidra, and the third one should be Destroy All Monsters. And, yeah. that, and then you've got the three best with this Godzilla in it. It's like the Daniel Craig Bond movies. But they'll do what they did with the Daniel Craig Bond movies. And the second one will have like... Will be a retread of this one. Well, you know, John, well, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny you should say that because I mean, the film is still out right now, and already they have Warner Brothers have decided they are going to do a second really? Godzilla like, film. Like yeah, on the third day of release, it made so much money. They announced it did, the sequel. and but with the same director. Look, I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, that's been decided. Yeah, that well, that is a problem. Well, well you know what? You know he's what? He's going to do the new Star Wars I, movie. I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yes, he's doing one of the. He's new been Star signed. Wars he's been signed to do. Now you know what? To, it's I think Boba Fett movie, but you don't see Boba Fett till the last one. <laughs> I think and he has now, very tiny feet. Now is the time to send, <laughs> Boba send your letters suggesting that maybe the second film be more like the uh, Monster Zero. Do you think that too? Like, let me ask you about as far as the Emmerich film and this film. Is there also something about the fact that this Godzilla should be a Japanese movie? I mean, it's like it's Americans trying to make a Godzilla film. Is it ever going to be? It's like the Japanese trying to do a. You know, Friday the Thirteenth, Jason movie or something. I mean, is I'd it, like is, to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know what I mean. Like, is it? I mean, we're uh, we're just trying to make a, a Japanese Godzilla. Well, we, film. we make a lot of we, we we make a lot of foreign movies, and a lot of people don't even know that they're that they were foreign. Right, 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 right. But I mean, the, the thing is that we've shown that Godzilla shows up to defend the Earth from a creature who lives here. So what's logical in the next movie is that he shows up to defend the Earth against. Gidera. Something from and outer space. And he teams space. up with, they keep saying Mothra's in the next one, which is, I think, the weakest of all the <gasps> yes! choices. Yes! Mo- I mean, that's... Yeah, so, but Mothra? let's say that the Gidera arrives, and so he teams up with Mothra and fights Gidera. So now we know that Godzilla will fight domestic violence, and he'll sh- fight interterrestrial, extraterrestrial violence, which leads us into, again, as I said, destroy all monsters. And Toho better crack loose with their characters. Like they did That's not, right. They did not give them the rights... To use any character except Godzilla, that's why we have this Mudo as opposed to Rodan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Which, which, and I, I actually like the Mudo. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool. I, I did too. I, I you know, it was cool. Again, if if we saw a little bit more of it, it would have been nice. But uh, it reminded but, me a little too much of Gaios. It was from, a little, but bit, that's kind of what I liked about it. It right. had I mean, the head of Gauss and the body from Cloverfield. Or yeah, right. or yeah. Uh, or. Um, Starship Troopers a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, I didn't yeah. mind. I thought it was it was. No, it was, cool. it was no cool. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I, I have to say, I enjoyed the Mudo until about a week ago when my friend Sandy Calora, <laughs> who who worked at Stan Winston's, posted pictures he drew in 1998 for another film that was a giant monster movie, where the monster is the Mudo. Literally, exactly the same profile of the head, the same eye, wow. the same body, the same wings, and the same little extra arms that he had done for another company. And clearly, the Mudo, somebody saw those pictures and ripped him off literally exactly. Wow. <clears throat> couldn't, couldn't he sue? I hope he does. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's... Because all those Mudo toys that are flying off the shelves, the toys are... <laughs> you us. heard it here first, folks, you can't, on you can't Monster find them anymore. Party. You can't find them. The Mudo toys, they're gone. No, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. I, really? I, yeah. I, I've gone to Toys R Us. Sean, I've been going to Toys R Us. 
<laughs> on a regular I'm basis. There. Sometimes nice. just to think. And, and just to, <laughs> yes, it is true. Just to take pictures. It is true. But uh, but I bit, there's actually the, the funny thing is there's supposed to be a large. Uh, Godzilla toy, twenty-four so, inch tall. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Really and it's never there. It's Ooh. never there. You can go eBay. on. Yeah, exactly. You know what they're selling. You can go to ToysRUs.com, dot com too. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, maybe I'll do that then. <laughs> <laughs> I like physically going to the store. I understand. Now. I, I like, understand. Because yeah, I'd like to see it. Because if it's made as badly as that one, oh. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, well, you know what's great is it, okay. if you we have this toy, and it was a gift from a show that we did uh, honoring Godzilla. But if you look at the other side of that toy. It is all like screws and holes. Things like, it's holes yeah. for screws. Yeah. Okay. All right. So look. So so would you say on a scale of one to ten, where would you rate the new Godzilla film, John? On a scale of one to ten. I would 10. say on a scale of one to ten, it's a solid six and a half. Okay. James. Okay. James. Okay. Uh, I'd say I'd say maybe seven. Matt. I'm I'm hovering around six. Uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say around six, I'm, five I, or six. I'm more like a. I'm like at an eight. I I really enjoy, I did. Right. I really I okay. enjoyed that film. Okay. okay, so so look, so this film, so so I see where you guys are on this film. But what would you, say, John? What would you say is your favorite Godzilla film of all time? Then, I mean, do my you have favorite, a favorite? Well, Destroy All Monsters is my favorite. Same Godzilla here, film absolutely of all time. And my second favorite is Son of Godzilla because it's the most personal. Of of all the Godzilla movies, it's the one where you you know you see Godzilla's personality and you see him as his son growing up. Yeah. I mean, and at the end of that, and I watched that with my dad when I was a kid. And at the end of that movie, when they're holding each other in the snow, in the snow, the snow. Yeah, it's very oh, powerful, yeah. very I touching. I, yeah. I cry when Godzilla dies at the end of Destroyer. I cry at the end of Son of Godzilla. There's yeah. not a lot of movies that I cry at the end of that have people in them, but you know Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I cheer when that little kid beats up the bullies. Sure, and yeah. Beats yeah. up the gangsters, and then he gets to beat up the bullies, and he remembers what Godzilla's told, you know, how yeah. Godzilla <laughs> taught, taught him how to do that. And of course, when he tried to use his tail and found that he didn't have a tail, he kind of fell down. <laughs> but there's a, you know, I, but Destroy All Monsters, you know, they put the poster up for that movie in our local theater, the Beacon Theater in Port Washington, you know, like mo- six months before the movie came out. And I'm walking home from school, and I look through the window, and I can see the poster for Destroy All Monsters. I don't know what it is, but I know it's got Ghidra on it. And yeah. Godzilla- we know Ghidra's in it. The yeah, Godzilla is a little... It, it doesn't little, really like, look like Godzilla. Yeah. The poster but, that I... Yeah, but I right. love that poster yeah. for, yeah. for that same reason. But when the... Reynolds Brown, the great, great poster. Yeah. Was. But when they opened, like, finally, like, that weekend when I could go in the theater to see a matinee, and I stood in front of that poster... And it always says coming soon. Well, back then, that meant coming before the next vernal equinox, <laughs> right? You know, right. Before the end of your and life. I, I waited, you know, and you know, Godzilla versus the sea monster and War of the Gargantuas and Destroy All Monsters. I saw those movies in the movie theater, and they always, they stopped wow. showing them into the seventies. They didn't show. Guy gone in theaters. Or Megalon. They? I don't think I, that ever I, came I, out. Megalon. Us. I, remember, I remember they, Megalon. Megalon, yeah, Megalon. I think was the last they one. Did show, they yeah. did show Guy Gan, but it was retitled Godzilla on Monster Island. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And Godzilla versus the Cosmic and it, Monster. And, it, and, it did not, and it's yeah. not so and good. Not yeah, so yeah. Good. yeah. Great poster. But Destroy All Monsters. Great poster. To me, Destroy All Monsters is like the golden age of Toho. You know where. Ha- uh, sure, Honda. It's kind of like the the pinnacle. Subaraya yeah. well, just the at, at the one. pinnacle of their of their. I mean, just they put everything into that film. It was just yeah. it was a true spectacle, and, and all the different New York being destroyed. It and took attacked. place all over the world, and, he had, and it's but, got and everything. He had, the, he had the aliens is in Paris. <laughs> yeah, it's got aliens yeah, right. and their but, female. But, yeah, because yeah. All, the, so, all the stuff bingo. you like, right? All the stuff you like the Monster Zero, the aliens. You, you had mm-hmm. one, different aliens now, and this one it was it was a great. It was a and great when, sci-fi and, movie as well as a great monster movie. And Varan movie. is in it. Yeah, yeah. Varan. Yeah, yeah. about two yeah. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> they, they pulled out every every suit they could. Yeah, and, and don't forget that the great Godzilla moment, which is he steps on their base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, like their base is exposed at the side of the mountain, and Godzilla comes up and he steps on it. It's like don't. Fuck with the earth. <laughs> I, I protect the earth. Take now, that, although he does fry the UN, so I don't know. It's a mixed message there. <laughs> that was uh, actually hey, good. Hey, it's <laughs> any establishment. That's all I'm down for. But uh, so, is it true with the whole Varen thing that the reason why it was shown that he was shown so uh, minimally in that was because the costume was all the messed suit up? Was terrible. Yeah. The suit was all. And I think decayed. Baragon too. They didn't show much too, right? No, they, they, yeah. But the, the, oh, the Varon had. The Varon was like the third. 
second or third one they ever made. The right. One right. They ever made. Ferran the Marionette. Unbelievable. It was and a I puppet, remember, right? And it just sat in a warehouse all that time. And foam does not do well. No, no. Right. But Even it's just he, great to see him there with his Rocky the Flying Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. yeah. Miracle he was in it at all. He needs another. We need to give him another shot. At you know, yeah. maybe they should work on the Varan movie. Wouldn't that be great? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, the I, Japanese. I, I don't. Oh, well, well, yes. They <laughs> could have just the Roland Emmerich movie. They could have called it Gigantosaurus. Like it wasn't Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At all. But the irony, just the, the just the circular irony, is that like Ray Harryhausen, who did. Uh, you know, Beast of 20,000 Fathoms Beast. hates Godzilla because Godzilla's a ripoff of Beast of 20,000 Fathoms. Right. And the first script was called The Monster from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, you know, for Godzilla. And the plot of Beast of 20,000 Fathoms, it comes into New York and they're tracking it and its blood's got a virus in it and everybody starts passing out. And that's in the Roland Emmerich movie. So Roland Emmerich rips off the movie <laughs> that Godzilla ripped off for his Godzilla movie. <laughs> Wow! Right, right. It's so it's so, so sloppy. It's yeah, no, funny. yeah. There's so much laziness involved with all of that, and that's what I think. That that's why you get these screenplays is that everyone just like ah, it's fine. You yeah, know, there's yeah. a guy in a in a big chair who goes, yeah, it's fine. But what? Yes, but what you guys have to, you know, I mean, I think everyone will agree here. The amazing thing is, uh, Godzilla has been with us now for uh, sixty years, basically. Yeah, I mean, Godzilla it continues to come is back. It the longest running theatrical character in movie history, probably. I can't think of another one. Maybe definitely, uh, definitely monster character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. of monsters, and that and that says something about this uh, giant well, him lizard. And Nick Nolte. <laughs> 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 how many how many earnest films did they do? <laughs> Six. Okay, all right. No, no, he's beat. He yeah, he beats him. He beats him. The one thing about Godzilla, especially we were talking about some of the older films, and that like because I I one of the films that I really enjoy the most is the all out monster attack. Which has an uh, like GMK, a, GMK, 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 GMK. Thank you, yeah. thank which you. I love. Which I yeah. love that movie because the, one of the reasons why I love that one is that it kind of harkens back to the first Godzilla a little yeah. bit of of that. Let's just make Godzilla a monster. Let's make him the right, villain, the badass. badass, and and it's so effective. And they do a lot of the things that, you, as you were talking about, how instead of trying to make the pseudoscience work, why not? Why not just make up some mythology things and. And that'll solve all your problems. And that and that movie is so great, and it's so scary. Like that very first scene where the uh, or one of the first scenes where the uh, the the kids are in the house. Oh my and that, gosh! And it just right. steps on it, and it's so frightening. Yeah, it has, it has the single scariest moment in any Godzilla movie, which is the girl who's in the hospital. Oh, bed. that's oh, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So describe that, that, John. To my wife. Well, this yeah. girl's in the hospital bed, and her foot's in a cast up. It's up. It's up in, you know, it's strapped up so she can't move. And she sees Godzilla coming through the window, coming towards the hospital, coming towards the hospital, and he passes the hospital. And she goes, ah. And then his tail comes back and destroys the hospital. <laughs> so good. It's the, first, it's the first Godzilla movie that I had seen where you saw the people he killed. And, like, yeah, you know, people, yeah. are out, there, people are out sightseeing, and he comes over the mountain, and the mountain just, he has an avalanche, and it just crushes them. So there's a lot of, in fact, he throws Barragon. Yeah, oh, oh, he lands on so everyone's, mean. lands on everybody he's in the crowd. He's so mean to Barragon, and it just it breaks my heart because I love Barragon so much. Barragon was played by a woman in that scene. No, I didn't know that. Barragon was the first time I, that I a knew. woman played really? in I knew. one of the suit motions. I, I didn't, I didn't know, no, but I knew. <laughs> I knew something in the eyes. You know, it's, it's yeah. funny you mentioned that. It, it there's a there's also a that great scene where they see Barragon in the distance, and there's all the tourists that go, oh. They, they, yeah, they start yeah. taking the photographs. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what does that say about the culture? And then all of a sudden, you yeah. see Godzilla show up. And, well, and the news helicopter, oh, too, the, is another yeah, great oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. The effects, get a shot, the, get a shot. Yeah. The effects in that movie where you see the people and you see Barragon coming. In the old days, I mean, they really took their, uh, their effects – in that movie, they really started to try to do them more the way that the new Gamera movies had been done. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, which was they'd put the camera on the ground, right, mm-hmm. in the street level, and they'd have the guys fight because when the camera's up on a tripod, it's clear there's two guys fighting in a fake set. You know, mm. right. It's the same but, director of those Gamera. Yeah, movies. same right. director, right? Oh, yeah, they brought, they brought yeah. him in, and yeah. then and then, but that shot where Barragon's coming, that com- that composite is flawless. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really it nice. It looks like she's there's really a giant monster coming right, through right. the woods a mile mm-hmm. away. I, I really enjoy that movie, except for the fact that Godzilla's got those, you know, 
or little orphan Annie eyes. Yeah, oh, see, really I weird. didn't mind the white eyes. Yeah, I, to me, yeah. he, I thought those he were really cool. He was pissed off because he was blind, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking around like, somebody keeps attacking me, but I don't see who they are. Yeah. Stop <laughs> pestering me. The Godzilla Zatoichi. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but but I understand, I think, even why they did that, because by whiting out the eyes, you don't it get the, more the giant eyes yeah. with the pupils. pupils yeah. And, right. you know, there's a little bit of a... a kind of a cartoony element to that by doing that you make him this this you know beast of terror yeah you can't read into yes yeah, yeah. you can't read into him He's an know. evil force yeah yeah but it's so far. effective and 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 also the idea of then making Ghidorah uh a, a, good, a guy. good guy for once yeah. right, right i could i was like yeah. what He's amazing. Amazing. it was tough for me like, but Ghidorah's bad, bad. Cold now, twist, though. but now correct me if i'm wrong it, it was that that movie was not a hit or it uh it, like they kicked they kicked that director off the series because it was taking in the wrong direction yeah. or something is that true that was my understanding my understanding is that was the last one he did yeah that, that was the last godzilla film but wasn't that, he that more of an anomaly like they wanted to give him a chance to do something because he did because so well he did the, the gamera, gamera films yes but but yeah. that was the only the godzilla rest. he ever did yeah, yeah. yeah. but it did was... it not do well in the theaters or? i don't i don't know the box office of i don't know the box office of that movie but i i do know that they did not their problems were with it were creative they didn't like that uh, the way that it, you know, they didn't like that Giger was a good guy, Godzilla was a bad guy. It, it just didn't, it just didn't messing work. with it, the it whole did, mythology it too just much. Didn't work for yeah. them. I mean, that's and that's also a very spiritual movie. Every a monster that dies, their spirit goes into the next monster, and that's very Gamera three. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, yeah. and, and yeah. Right, it's right. spirited away. And yeah. that's not what um, uh, like international audiences don't understand that. Sure. You know? Right. But what I what I do, there are a couple great moments in that movie mm-hmm. where there's a that nice little dig at the Roland Emmerich yeah. movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Where they go, well, they did think there was a Godzilla in New York, but we don't it, think it was. Yeah. It, we don't think it was the real one. It wasn't the real one. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that. I love oh, the fact that uh, that they were able to even do that. That was fantastic. I, I think I think the Japanese got a kick out of the failure of the Roland Emmerich one because I visited <laughs> Japan shortly after the Emmerich one was released and they loved to hear me say that that movie sucked. Well, you know, what's interesting is that Toho gave them, had given the rights to, you know, Sony and, you know, Stan Winston had made this great maquette, this four foot tall Godzilla that you know, I have pictures of somewhere and this other, this flying creature and then they they shit canned Jan de Bon because they said the budget was too high. So they went to Roland Emmerich, who came in and said, "I'll make that movie for twenty million dollars more than Jan de Bon." They're like, "That's great." <laughs> <laughs> Typical Hollywood logic. And he went off and he bragged that in they wrote that script in a weekend. Wow, that how movie. impressive! They went, to, wow. <laughs> they yeah. went down to Mexico, tell Corman to that a little resort, <laughs> and the two of them sat there and they just spitballed terrible ideas and made a script of it so then they took the the godzilla design to toho and this uh, a friend of mine who's a big effects guy told me this story and he said they you know the toho guys came into a room in japan and the, the maquette was covered in the center of the table and they pulled the sheet off and they were all like oh fuck <laughs> and of course they would talk to each other in japanese and they were like give us a moment <laughs> and one guy was cutting off his thumb <laughs> no and they but they it was said, like spinal tap so what's the real one going to look like <laughs> yeah. said, this is a godzilla be trod upon by midgets but anyway. <laughs> but what, what happened was uh, they left you know they left them for a moment and they said this is terrible this is not godzilla and they said this is our chance to have a big American, you know, $100 million budgeted movie of Godzilla, which will reactivate. Like at the time, Toho banned all the Godzilla toys, all the Bondi toys of yeah. the old Godzillas. Yeah. They pulled them out of all the toy stores in Japan and in America because they, you know, all over the world because they thought this Godzilla was going to be the Godzilla. And by the way, I know kids who their first movie they saw because they were like six years old is that Godzilla. And they have no idea it's a bad movie. Well, is, did that 
correct me if I'm wrong. Was that movie really a huge bomb? Or I thought it kind of actually did fairly decently. No, right? it was right? not a bomb. It it did okay. It did not do the numbers. I, I know that critically they it was expe- it was oh it was panned. It was panned, but, but it wasn't like a huge flop. It, it was not a huge flop. But then it wasn't as as big of a hit as they. I mean, right. Sean, when it, you it put that kind franchise. of money, when you put that kind of money into a film, you expect that film to have legs. You right, expect sure. you know the they toys. Wanted, they, wanted, they expected it to be the big franchise. And it's like that but, first. It, did they get a lot of money from that? Like that first like few weekends. Your first yeah. few weekends. I was there. I, really want, I, yeah, I well, mean, I, yeah, we, we all were. Yeah. yeah. All right, and you have to remember too that when you talk about theatrically released movies in general, if whatever the movie cost, which is the cost of shooting the movie plus P and A and everything, the movie has to make three times that gross to break even. That's the break even point. So if that movie cost with P and A like one hundred and fifty million dollars, they had to make four hundred and fifty million dollars worldwide. To then start making profit. Now, after that, they because you know the studios get half and the theaters get half, and the foreign, the foreign companies get half and the studios get half. So when something makes four fifty, it only makes you know two twenty five, right? So, you know that movie costs a lot of money, and every day that that money isn't back in Sony's bank, they add the interest to the cost. Right, of the right, film. right. Yeah. So you have to make like the new Godzilla movie has to make six seven hundred million dollars to be profitable. In the theatrical run, but then the DVD is going to be huge sure. and mm-hmm. cable get all and everything bo- else. All the bootlegs and, yeah. and they're already on the streets of China. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and the to- they can't and, see it though through the smog. But you know, anyway, and, and the toys and everything like that. But Godzilla just did okay. And by the way, one of the jokes when when Sony bought Columbia was somebody had said like day one, and watch they're going to make a big Godzilla movie like as a joke because they were a Japanese company. And when they announced it, there was a lot of. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, there was commercials. The commercials for that movie made me so happy. I was like, Godzilla yeah, in the city. Yeah. And just like yeah. with this Fiat commercial, there was some Taco Bell commercial or something <laughs> that showed Godzilla before the movie came out. Yeah. The the Chihuahua. You the, could, yeah, Taco Yokito Bell. Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It actually had more. Here, lizard, lizard. I, I actually own a couple of those little Chihuahuas. I was, I was so excited. I can't tell you how many times I went to Taco Bell. Just oh to get the my. little burritos to I, get I guess we should be grateful that it didn't earn enough to make a sequel and a franchise at the time because it would have those would have sucked too, right? And and I guess we should be grateful that this one did well enough to announce a sequel because maybe maybe they'll work on it a little bit. Yeah, maybe they'll maybe. take some of this stuff I'm, to heart. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that it, it will be a little better. Um, um, I, I I look guys. I did enjoy this one despite the the, the I had and I had some issues. and I had. Some enjoyment, like I, I actually did enjoy it, mm-hmm. but there's, I mean, I've got a, you know, a giant volume full of notes, sure, yeah. and and that's a problem. I mean, it, every moment that a, a movie is taking you out of it mm-hmm. is terrible. Look, I saw it with my wife and my son, who's 24, and he's grew up on Godzilla. The first words he could say were like Godzilla mania, and his mom was like. <laughs> Teach him math, and say, uh, <laughs> said, math, math isn't going to help him do well. In life. Thank you. Being able to voice of reason, all the Godzilla monsters will help this kid more. Exactly. And he loved it, and she loved. I mean, they watched that movie because they weren't bringing the emotional baggage. I was right, mm-hmm. right. So, which was you know I'd seen all the commercials, and they'd showed every major scene in the movie had been shown as a scene. So I'm just sitting there going like, okay, I know this is the scene where he talks about the movie. Get, get to it. Get to it. Yeah. Get to it. Get to it. And there was so much get to the next thing. that, And when the thing came, I enjoyed it. But I don't remember the audience at the end of the movie like just cheering for Godzilla. Right, and also right. when I think they felt clobbered by that time because there was so much destruction on such a grand scale. So, so actually technically well done, but that – you know, I mean, how can you really even be that emotionally invested anymore? Hey, you know what? I saw it. I actually, James and I saw it on on opening night. Opening night, Chinese theater, China, Grumman's IMAX, Chinese theater. IMAX this is 3D. the big, big theater. Yeah, yeah. You know what? The audience at the end they applauded. Yeah, but it, it was it was tired applause. It was no, <laughs> no, it was not tired applause. It yeah, applause. yeah, it was, it was enthusiastic. It was, it was like, okay. yay, we made when, it when through applaud- this. No, it's over. Because it was it's over. over. I just no, it was so not. It was enthusiastic now. applause. I well, heard it differently. That's well, I, I I have to say that when Godzilla gets up at the end, 
and walks into the water. I did enjoy that because that's what you want to see. You want right. to see Godzilla go off into the water. Yeah, but I need. I, I, need, I, 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 need but I wanted moment. that water to now floods San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. See, I need. I like. I like that ending. They're dead too. anyway. So <laughs> I, I like that ending too. But I needed a moment. He wakes up. You know, he's been dormant. He wakes up. A moment. Is he going to come back and destroy the rest of the city? Well, or is he going to... Yeah, because we yeah still like he looks really, around. He's a hero right away. It's like, well, wait yes. a second. Yeah, where is the... Oh, my God, yeah, it's yeah. alive! Yeah. And everybody's yeah. running. <laughs> so there's a, there's a, there, one of the newer Godzilla movies, one of the Godzilla 2000, I think, where Godzilla defeats the bad guy monster and then just sets Tokyo on fire yeah. after the fact. He's like, right. I saved you all, and now... I'm going to celebrate by just burning your city. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know. Don't like you either. No. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, I just can't keep going back to the Roland Emmerich movie, which is somebody says, the missiles won't go, the heat-seeking missiles won't get him because he's cold-blooded. And cold-blooded just means he can't generate his own heat, but a creature that big would be like a million degrees. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, and that's, again, it's the science. Like somebody says, cold-blooded, it must be cold. Yeah, they're mi- it's freezing. <laughs> Everyone knows lizards are made of ice. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, that always gets me. But let me, let me just, uh, before we wrap this thing up, you Do have, we have a gr- to stop. I know, right? <laughs> this has been so much fun. I mean, right. we're going to have to have John back again. Yes, oh, we will. We will, yes. absolutely. But but bef- before we do this, getting back full circle to Godzilla's Revenge and Son of Godzilla, when we did our show, you told this great story about like being bullied as a kid, and I had that same kind of situation. If you could just tell that, like, because you have this great story of like when Yes, I think you do. Yes, I think you, you do. do, John. I, I heard it too. You don't have to. You don't. <laughs> yeah, if you could tell it a little more exciting than you did the first time you did, no, that would be I great. Say, I say that because it was a. It's a beautiful story. It's yeah, a beautiful and it, story. And it. it do you, would you feel like sharing? Just you know, you, like don't, you don't. You don't have to add all the flavors no, 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 to no. it. No, you can. You can. You know. You can brush it if you want. Uh, well, you know, when 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 I was a kid, um, you know, my. My escape from the bullies at school was Ray Bradbury paperbacks right. and the 430 movie. Sure. You know, on ABC, they used to have Monster Week where they'd show... We all Gap, we know it well. Yeah, yeah but totally. the Triphibian monster mm-hmm. and destroy all monsters and Monster Zero. And Godzilla's Revenge, for we, which we talked about at the beginning of the show, was about a kid that was bullied and didn't have... My father was never home. And I saw myself in that kid... And I saw the way Godzilla helped that kid, and I just said, "You know, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that to heart. I'm going to, I'm going to, re- you know, not let these bullies walk all over me. I'm not going to let the world squish me because, you know, I can be powerful like Godzilla. You know, Godzilla is, is I, you know, I, did, I didn't think he was real." Right, because right. I was like, yeah, "You're not insane. You're just a kid." <laughs> right, right. I, I thought, and I knew. Good. Besides, I knew he lived in Japan. He wasn't gonna. <laughs> yeah. If go he to, does live, he's not. He doesn't live around here. It's like eight thousand miles. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. So we no way in advance of us getting there. Uh, and I and I and I used the, the philosophy of Godzilla's Revenge to deal with the bullies in my life, the bullies at home and the bullies. In school, and it, it really saved my life. You know, Godzilla really saved my life. Well, and also, if I remember, <laughs> you you told the story about like that they were chasing you, and then you suddenly <laughs> I turned around and I did the Godzilla jumping, you know, like where Godzilla was on his tail. I I jumped on them the way Godzilla jumped on uh, Ghidorah. <laughs> and destroy all monsters, and they were like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. They were like, yeah, "Why are you? It. Why are you hurting us?" Because like, <laughs> I'm Godzilla, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Guys chasing you, saying, "If we catch you, we'll kill you." Well, guess what? Yeah, yeah. I took Godzilla, that to heart. <laughs> Godzilla taught me what to do to you, bitches. <laughs> wow, that's an awesome story. That's a great story. That. Well, thank you so much for making this scene, making thank the you. monster party, uh, and please on. come to more of them because you know when you do them yeah, yeah we'd absolutely love to have you back absolutely this has been awesome this has been great the uh, stories and the booze flow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a it's a tapestry yes uh well um that's that's our show and yeah. uh i am matt weinhold i am sean sheridan i'm larry stroth and i'm james gonis and i was john fasano keep america strong watch godzilla movies <laughs> 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 Mm-hmm.